Okay, if it's clear, then let's move to, uh, I just want to review again the bistable elements, right? So now we talk about the register. So, so we see the big picture about the register and also the ledge. We also know the importance of setup time, hold time, TCQ, and then how to how contamination delay, how they gate us so that we have a uh, maximum cross speed, right? Now we try to implement those elements, right? But before that, let's just review what is a bistable uh, element, right? This is just like an SRAM, but it's also an, it's a general bistable element, zero in, and then you have one and then zero. If you remember what we did is, this is V1, uh, V in one, right? Then your V out has this curve. And then this, uh, we flip 45 degrees. So now the V out one here is the input, right? And then V out two is the output. So we flip it, then we have this curve. But be, since V out one, you got V I two, and then V out two, you got V I one, we can combine them. Then we have this butterfly curve. Right, that we discussed earlier that they are advised there. How many stable points do we have here? Anyone? How many stable points in this butterfly curve? We learned that already, but I hope that you, it's easy for you to tell me. One, two, three. Two. Two, thank you. We have a meta stable point, which is C, right? If you just uh, move it a little bit, then you will go to either A or B. Now the question is, I store some data, zero, one, zero. How do I flip it to one, zero, one? How do you do it? So there are two ways. One is that we cut the feedback loop. For example, originally, you have this one, okay? We cut it, okay? It was zero, one, right? So once we cut it, then all we need to do is just change this to one and this will go to zero automatically. And then we close it, then you store the data, right? So this is a way to change the data, okay? Another is the overpower the feedback loop. And what does it mean? You still have the feedback loop, but we don't cut it because cutting it actually is not easy. You need to add a switch that increase the area and also increase the power consumption. Right? So how do we overpower? We have a very strong, for example, this was at zero and one. Right, we have a very strong inverter like this, okay, to change the content. So what exactly it is going on when we do this? Uh, we make, for example, this becomes one, a uh, zero. Then we will try to force this one to becomes one. Once this become one, but the point is this guy, the bottom one, try to make this to zero, but because you are much stronger inverter than it. So you will bring this to a intermediate state. So for example, if this one is V out two, right? It was at zero. This is at this point. At this point, we out two is zero, right? When I add this very high voltage, it might bring this one to here. Okay, so it might situate at a point like here. Okay, when I add the buffer. And after that, it will go through the positive feedback. Right, because this is here. Then you will go to here and then go to here. And then you will eventually go to when we out to equal to one. 
right? So just driving and then drive plus feedback. Then you will be able to change the content. Is that okay? Basically, it's just like how you can change the state of a bistable animal. So how do we do that? First of all, we can do the multi-pressor based latch, right? So look at this. Turn out the latch where it's very easy. This is just a multi-pressor, right? I can even write the equation for this one. What does it mean? What is Q? Well, Q equal to Q if the clock is high. Right? Or it equal to D if the crop is low. Is this okay? This is just the binary uh, representation. I mean, uh, the equation, right? So then I do the red ledge, right? Basically, you think that when your crop is high, this negative ledge transparent low. When the clock is high, it is in whole mode. When the clock is low, the data will go through. Positive ledge is just opposite. How do we implement it? We implement it by the transmission gate, right? So for example, let's take an example. When the clock is high, then this is low, right? This is high. Then what does it mean? This one is on but this is off, right? So the data will go through. So now can you tell me, is this a positive ledge or negative ledge for this circuit? It's a positive ledge. Positive ledge. Because it's transparent high. Okay. So how do we write the data? In this case, we cut the feedback loop to write the data, right? Because we, when it is high, this one is off. We cut the feedback loop and then we write the data and then we close it. Okay. Any questions? Now then we are talking about the transmission gate. The problem is transmission gates, we have two uh, transistor for each gate. Then you are going to consume a lot of power because your clock need to drive a lot of trans, uh, transistor, right? So what can we do is we can change this to just a pass gate, a simple resistor. Okay, so this one still work, but it's not as great. We will talk about that later. Right, but the clock only drive to transistor instead of four. Okay, and here we also need to introduce the concept called long overlapping clock. Now, you have a clock. How do you generate another clock? I mean, how do you generate the clock clock bar? The clock comes in. You have a buffer inverter to generate this. So in principle, there is a delay for these two signals because you need to go through the inverter, right? A seven five, you just try the inverter, the delay is in the order of few picoseconds. There's a big deal for the uh, gigahertz logic. So in reality, your clock is like this. Yeah, I have a clock but the crop bar would be something like this. There is a delay. And there's an overlap. Do you see this? Both one. We call it one, one overlap, right? When the crop goes up, the crop bar is supposed to go down but it, it takes some time to go down because of delay. So this was a time both of them are on. That's called one-one overlap. Similar here, when the clock goes down, 
the crop, crop ball is supposed to go up, but it has a delay. So there's a time that both are zero. So you have one zero zero overlap overlap. But here we say that if you want this to work, I need to have a long overlapping crop, which is almost impossible. Okay, but we'll discuss this more later. But the point is that now we start with this very trivial structure and then we say the crop is driving too much low. So we reduce it to two transistor. Okay, now, then what is the poor problem between the pass gate and transmission gate? Transmission gate, you have two transistor, right? And pass gate, you only have one, right? Here, I just copied the picture we used in the earlier lecture. Do you remember when I asked you whether the NMOS or PMOS is a better for pull down network? If you want to pass a zero, okay? Here is no difference from passing. For example, here, I try to pass VDD to the output. If I only have MOS, I can only bring it to VDD minus VTH. But if I use PMOS, I can bring it to VDD. So when you're passing a high voltage, you need PMOS. Similarly, I want to pass zero to the output. MOS will be the best. For PMOS, it only can bring down to VTP, right? So if you look at the output voltage and the resistance, you see for MOS, if they will try to bring the output voltage to low, it is very good. But then when you try to bring to high, the resistance go up a lot. PMOS, when you try to bring it to high, it has low resistance. But if you try to bring it low, the resistance bring up, bring up a lot, right? And that's why we do this transmission gate. We have both MOS and PMOS so that it can pass both one and zero easily, okay? If you only have a MOS like this, then you will have a problem in bringing this up, like here, right? But this still work because I have a feedback. This one, you, although you don't get to zero, but this one will bring this one to VDD. Remember the, what I say, regenerative circuit? logic, which we mentioned at the very beginning of the course, right? So it still works, but it's not as good. So that's different between transmission gate and pass gate. Okay, any questions? Right, if no, finally, I want to talk about this, how we can implement the edge trigger register. Here is called master slave edge trigger register. Okay. I still use the tradition uh, name for now, right? You see, there is nothing. It's just a two latches. Do you see that this is let two latches? What type of latches is it for the master one or the first one? Is it a transparent high or transparent low? Negative ledge. Negative ledge. Is that right? It means that when the crop is one, it will be standby mode, right? When the clock is zero, you will copy the data, right? Yes. Very good. I got confused. That's why I asked you this question, right? So. Very good, right? So you see, even I confuse. I'm not saying I'm good, but I have cheat sheet. I don't have cheat sheet actually, right? Negative ledge, okay? So similar, if you look at the slave, you see that they got swapped. So this is the positive ledge, right? So you see the edge trigger register, right? Here is actually a positive edge trigger register. is formed by a negative latch plus a positive latch in this order. Oh, 
what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's not difficult. Let's see how it works, right? So when the clock is high, right? When the clock is high, this one is on. This one is on, right? So when the clock is high, QM will just be copied to Q. Okay, so nothing happened because this is in the whole mode. The data won't affect the Q, right? So no problem. When the clock is low, what happened? This time, the slave is at home mode. This is off, right? You don't affect the Q, but the D is copied to QM. You see, D copied to QM, but still output has no effect. Now, if the clock goes high again, this one will copy to here, okay? But then the master will be brought here. So as a result, the overall feeling is that when the clock go from low to high, the data is copied from Q D to Q. This is just because when it was at low, D copy to Q M. And then when it's at high, M, Q, M, copy, copy to Q. So overall, it feels like that D copy to Q when there's a positive edge trigger, okay? So that's what I want to say today. And I will explain more next time. Thank you. Let me, let me know if you have any questions.